Dr. Sass. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director Saldana, um, in January, 21-year-old Sarah Root was killed in Omaha by an illegal alien named Eswin Mejia. Uh, he was street driving while drunk. This is not the first time that local police had arrested Mr. Mejia for driving drunk. Um, and after he was arrested for the incident, he posted bail. Prior to being released from jail, however, local police contacted ICE and requested that he be detained because of his immigration status. ICE, however, refused and said that would not be consistent with the president's immigration executive actions. Mejia was released and disappeared. Um, do you think someone uh, who street races while driving drunk and kills another person is a threat to public safety? If an illegal alien kills an American citizen, should ICE let that person go free? Go free? Well, there'll which be, is, which is there'll what be criminal here. consequences. There'll be criminal consequences. We don't know where the man is. Right. And, and sir, I, I'm, I don't understand where you got the information with respect to our refusing uh, to um, deal with this individual. That, that's this not is, my understanding of the facts. This is ICE's public comment. ICE has said that in response to Omaha law enforcement who said they requested that ICE detain him. I, I am ICE, and I don't, I don't recall making that statement. I would not have said that. Uh, what we did do is we look at every individual case like we do here with uh, Mr. Mejia uh, and uh, determine whether a detainer uh, to recommend to local law enforcement is appropriate. Uh, as you know, uh, there's been a sub that's been a subject of much conversation. We are working very hard to get all local law enforcement to work with us on it, and we've made some great strides. But in this case, uh, I, I just uh, there is not a single injury or death that occurs at the hands of an illegal immigrant that doesn't weigh heavily on me, Senator. I, I, I believe that. I'm going I'm to interrupt because I'm quoting your your agency here. Uh, this is my letter to you, February 29th. Um, <clears throat> I'm quoting your agency's public statement. Uh, this is footnote four in my letter. Do you have the letter of February 29th? Your, your agency said in response, at the time of his January 2016 arrest in Omaha and local criminal charges, Eswin Mejia, 19 of Honduras, did not meet ICE's enforcement priorities. As stated by the November 20th, 2014 civil enforcement memo issued by Secretary Johnson. Oh, I understood you to say that we told local law enforcement we were not going to do anything about him because he didn't meet our priorities. That is a statement of fact in one person's interpretation. Quite frankly, sir, it's very easy to look back and say that person's judgment was incorrect, and I have some concerns about that. As I said earlier, every situation we have that results in something as horrific as this, we always try to learn from it, and I'll be following up to, dis to look at the specific individuals involved, how the judgment was formed, and why uh, that was done. But I misunderstood your question. I understood your question to mean we told law enforcement that we're not going to do that. Well, the, the rest of your statement says, your agency's statement, not you personally, that me to grow, is scheduled to go before an immigration judge on March 23rd, 2017, but he was released by the police once he posted bail. They contacted your agency, asked him to detain him. ICE didn't act. How do, how do you explain that to the family? We acted, we tried to act, sir, but I believe there was a, a matter of hours between the time that we were contacted and the actual release. It, it is very hard for us to get to every uh, inquiry that is made by law enforcement, and, un and unfortunately, it had a horrible consequence here. But we try very hard to respond as quickly as possible. We just can't get to every site within a matter of hours. I think it was four hours here, if I'm not, I don't know if that I'm fact. remembering correctly. But uh, uh, that, that is a fact, is that we try very hard to get and respond to low and lo local law enforcement. It doesn't do us any good to tell them to cooperate with us if we're not going to respond. Um, my letter to you is uh, 16 days ago. Can you tell me when I'll receive a reply? Because it has details on all of these questions. Yes, I think, uh, I think we will get you a reply within a couple of weeks, uh, if that's satisfactory. And, and if you need it sooner, I'll certainly uh, work to try to get that. Could we have it by the end of next week? Yes, you can. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, General Roth, uh, in November of 2014, Secretary Johnson issued a number of memos changing uh, DHS policies on immigration, known collectively as the President's Immigration Executive Actions. One of these memos addressed changes to ICE's detention policy for illegal aliens. Uh, DHS said in that memo 
that it was designed to identify threats to public safety. Spe specifically, it says that unless an illegal alien has been charged with a serious crime, ICE will not likely detain that person. Does this policy mean that ICE does not consider someone a threat to public safety unless they've already been convict convicted? Frankly, I was not involved in uh, writing that memo or developing that policy, so it's difficult for me to respond to that. To your knowledge, though, are ICE officials required to strictly follow the new policy, or is it used as guidance and then there's discretion on a case-by-case -case basis? Uh, again, uh, we have not looked at that in any kind of audit or investigative uh, aspects, so I think that's best directed to uh, members of the administration or to ICE. Does the IG office have any plans or any current studies of the president's uh, executive actions on immigration? We do not. Um, Director Saldana, how should ICE officials implement the new detention policies that were put in place in November of 2014 with regard to cases like this? You mentioned the timing point. Can you give us a broad sense of how you exercise your discretion? Well, generally speaking, let me, and let me just address the tail end of, of that uh, question that you had, and that is uh, requirement of conviction. I, I'm happy to share with you this card that we have that we provide to all our uh, ICE officers who are involved in this activity. But there are many categories here where conviction is not necessary. If this is a person with a, a gang affiliation, no conviction is necessary. If this is a person with terrorist ties, no conviction is necessary. There are several that do in, involve a conviction. But let me point out to you, sir, and I have, I have met with all our field office directors to specify clearly to them that there is always this category. Uh, which is kind of an umbrella category that says if, there, if this does not fit a specific case, but you as an informed, well-trained um, uh, officer of Immigration and Customs Enforcement believe that that person presents a public safety threat, you are free to exercise your judgment in the manner consistent with that judgment. But in this case, Sarah Root is dead. I mean, so what if someone kills a U.S. citizen? That doesn't meet the threshold? That was after the fact, sir. Some, what you're saying is I understand that that person was injured and had not, in that four-hour period of time, uh, seriously injured, but had not uh, passed away until later. Uh, again, sir, it's easy to look back and say that judgment was poorly exercised, and as I said earlier, I intend to learn from this particular incident. Uh, I feel... Uh, Terrible uh, for the Root family, and and and, uh, but I I can say I wish I had a hundred percent foolproof method to ensure and to look in the future and and ensure whether somebody is going to commit a crime or not. And it's very difficult to do that. I hope you don't. I hope you take my word that we do the best we can. Uh, I, I hear you, but it isn't the case that he was released and then went and had the, another drunk driving street racing case. This was drunk driving street racing that killed someone, then he posted bond, then the Omaha police asked that he be detained. ICE didn't detain him, and now he's fled. And I intend to use this again. I am going to look further into this and, look, and use it for lessons learned if there were uh, serious errors of judgment here. But many times... Prosecutorial discretion is just that. It is a judgment that's being exercised by the person.